Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a brief look at the GNOME 40. I know I'm a little late to do this. Uh, some of this was I was having issues getting it running in my virtual machine. And I was going to update my old Arch system today, not the one I'm currently running, but the old one. I want to update that one today and uh, test this out. And that somehow killed itself. So self-imploded. That's all right. I haven't used it anyway. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Haven't updated Arch in like three or four months, just died anyway. So we just went ahead and installed Fedora directly on this system on that same hard drive to get a chance to test drive it on real hardware a little bit. And I wanted to ask that good and fundamental question, is GNOME 40 the right direction for where GNOME is going? And so I'm going to indicate that as we go ahead and have a look at the video here. But uh, really, if you if you follow the channel for a while, I've never been a huge fan of GNOME. I'm not a big fan of the keyboard layouts. I'm just not a big fan of how the things work. I like using desktop icons. I like seeing all of my windows that are open all at once. Basically, GNOME is a fundamental uh, disagreement with the way I personally use computers. Nevertheless, there is a big push for a lot of people that say, this is exactly what I'm looking for in a desktop. And it does make sense from a younger generation perspective because it matches so well with the smartphones, with the, um, the tablets, all these things that the younger generation has grown up on. So maybe I'm just an old boomer here, but, um, <laughs> whatever that would happen to be. So without any real further ado, we're going to jump on over to Fedora 34 beta, which is where I'm going to have a look at my GNOME 40. I'm going to go ahead and give you my comments over there. For our test here of GNOME 40, we are going to have a look at the Fedora 34 beta, which I have installed here on my computer, just on an external hard drive, not a USB drive, but a full fledged hard drive. We are on X instead of the default Wayland because I am using Simple Screen Recorder for our recording and that will not work under Wayland as of yet, but none of the other screen recorders that were available did a decent job of allowing me to select just a single desktop rather than the whole thing all at the same time. So I love me my Simple Screen Recorder. So of course you can see here we're running Fedora 34, we are running at 16 gigs of RAM on the Ryzen 5 1600 processor here. And uh, there's pretty much what we have. So as far as your main basic changes, uh, Tech Republic had just a couple of the, the um, just kind of the under the hood things, migration GDK4, auto completion in the file manager, wi you know, better sorting of Wi-Fi connections, um, more notification types for the calendars, App windows um, include icons for easier identification and then dash horizontally, we'll look at that. And then applications at will, we will look at that as well. All that's fairly boring stuff. Now, when you first boot this up, you're going to land on this screen rather than this screen. Honestly, I originally was thinking about going, well, that's kind of lame. Why don't you just boot to the desktop? Then it occurs to me, aha, yeah, on a desktop that doesn't have any icons or panels by default, you're going to have to invariably go to this screen first anyway. So let's just go ahead and do it. So, hey, I'm all in favor for this. It's a little odd. I think it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. But at the same time, it actually is a step in the right direction. You will notice here automatically that they have organized things. Uh, of course, you will notice if you have used GNOME 3 in the past where everything used to be sorted uh, vertically. Now it is sorted horizontally. Now, this isn't just a change in horizontal um, uh, horizontal changes. You can actually a lot easier gesture with a touchpad and scroll with a mouse wheel to get to different desktops a lot faster. And that's really one of the reasons that kept me from using GNOME is that GNOME 3 is almost entirely best efficient at using keyboard only. This, I could do something like this a lot faster. That was one of the things keeping me from using the GNOME desktop is because I use the mouse and the keyboard in combination. And this actually allows a lot more mouse keyboard combination to be done. And so I could see myself being a little bit more comfortable with it, maybe, although I'm probably not ditching cinnamon anytime soon. 
Of course, we do have our applications down at the bottom, and you can pull these guys up over here. And this organization is actually a lot nicer in that now I can specify where things are launching to much easier than I could when everything was, you know, our desktops were kind of half on the screen over here. With this up this way, I can just go ahead and say, all right, we're going to launch that over there. We're going to launch that over there. And now we can sort sift over and we can launch things into direct windows automatically. So there we have it. So with that, you can actually get in there and see why this makes um, moving things quite a bit faster with the horizontal movement. Of course, the rest of it is the theming. We're getting consistency across like every device and everything. The corners are getting more and more rounded. Um, I guess the 90s is coming back for another ring with a lot of drop shadow. Okay, I can say I don't really have any distaste over this design. I actually think it looks good, looks pretty slick. So overall though, it's not radically different. I know they're billing it as GNOME 40, a big change. Really, it's not a huge change. Mostly things are just going left to right with a little bit better management. Oh, one other thing I didn't mention is without any extensions, you can move things together. You can rename your folders. You can pull things out of folders. Let me get back to there. Pull things out of folders and you can do an as will organization. So you can directly organize things any way that you like. All of this is done by default without extensions. So while GNOME first was making its rounds, removing all extensions and things like that, eventually what they were able to do is now they're starting to put back some of the things that people tended to like the best. Like, hey, I want to be able to organize stuff in here the way I want to have it organized. So really that's, um, that's what we're seeing. So overall, I think that this is a, a radical positive change in where GNOME is going. I look forward to seeing where this is moving on to. But nevertheless, um, I still do like my cinnamon. I like my original default layout. Uh, this does look good. It does look compelling. And uh, overall, I think it's pretty good. Let me know uh, your thoughts. Do you like this new version? Do you not like this new version? Or are you just giving up on GNOME altogether for other reasons? <laughs> Let me know whatever your thought is on that. And uh, maybe we'll have a look at this uh, fedora another day. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.